All right, this is my assets file. This is my stage file. This is the final frame in my stage that I have um, kind of tested and know that works. So I go back to my assets and I'm building the next frames. And basically I just need this wolf to move into position. So my next frame is going to be just the hero pose with the puppet warp turned off. Just like this. I don't need to worry about moving the, uh, the fern anymore because the fern's movement is kind of a surprise in my animation now. But I can work with transforming my creature. I'm going to keep it as a smart layer. And the simplest way to move a creature into frame, because I want to work towards the deadline, is just to have it tilt a little bit and move horizontally a little bit. So that's a frame. Once I'm happy with it, I can put it into a group. Then I can bring that group over. And move that to the bottom of my, my stack. And while the whole group's selected, move it into place, snap it in. So it goes from that to that. I'm moving in reverse order now. It's a little confusing. But you'll see how that works. Now I can go back to my assets and build the next frame, keep it really simple. I'm just going to duplicate the whole group, move that down, turn that off, turn that off. And now I'm going to move this creature a little bit back and I'm going to tilt it. A little bit forward like it's going over this rock and I can turn on the effects and I probably should have done that for that frame too so I will I do this drop shadow effect but I'm gonna tone it down a little bit that looks good and then what I can do is I can actually right click and copy that layer style, that drop shadow, even that puppet warp. And I can go back to the group I just did before, and I can paste that layer style onto this frame. So that I've added the shadow now. But then I want to think, oh, did I do that for the group before? So you're really thinking kind of fully dimensionally here. And now I have Three frames finished. Let's just go ahead and finish them off. So I'm going to make a duplicate of that last one. Move that down. Turn off what's ahead. Move my creature. See, there's so many uses of layers here. Tilt it back this way a little bit. It's going to look kind of jittery, like I'm just playing with paper dolls. But that's okay. I can increase the drop shadow underneath if I want. As he comes into frame. 
And then I'm just going to keep going that way with my assets. Duplicate that group, move it down to the bottom. Whoops. I don't want to move it into the group. So I can hit, yeah, command left bracket will move it down. And make changes to this one. Again, with just the creature, don't need to move the fern. Move it back and maybe tip it a different way as it's coming in. Keep that shadow, duplicate the group. So much Command J. Move it down underneath, but not in. And you can tell by the way it name, names it. So this is group four, copy four. Then move my creature again and tilt it the other way, like so. And if I don't like how that paw lines up with the rock, maybe I can lift it up a little bit. Oh, and maybe at this point, yeah, that'll be interesting. I'll increase the drop shadow a little bit more since we're near the edge. Kind of increases its presence coming into the frame. And because I'm working backwards, that will grow organically. Now I duplicate that. I move it down. And I might not need this extra frame. I'm just going to have the snout come in like that and tilt it a little. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more frame. This will help me set to reset. Where maybe only the creature's shadow is affecting the landscape. Move it down. And just controlling your kind of puppet features. All right, so now, I know this is a little, it's a lot, it's very technical, but I'm gonna take all those assets and I'm gonna move all of those groups over. So they're all basically copies of the same elements. You can see how the animation will go just in this sequence. So I'm going to select them all, turn them all on. Even this one, because I have the shadow. I'm going to hold down Command, select all those groups. That's a lot of layers. That's a lot of memory. Even at only 800 by 800 pixels. I move this out, and I drag and drop these in. They're all selected so I can move them all together with the move tool. And move them in. You can see all the little parts of my creature that are off the frame. So I use the top and bottom guides to snap it in. There we go. Up, oh, it's not quite there. I'm going to use my arrow keys to nudge it in. But I don't want to crop it until I've merged them. Yep, I don't want that whole camera to shift.
This is why formatting and sizing is so important, so you're not spending so much time trying to get things to match in terms of their placement. And if they don't match, then you just get this kind of shaky cam effect in your animation. Well, it's so close. Just needs to move back one step. There we go. All right. So now to test this, I have to merge and crop all of these. Let's see if I can do it all at once. Take all these groups, select them all, right click, and I can merge them all. But that will merge them all into one layer, so that's no good. Instead, I have to do the annoying, repetitive thing of merging each one. That will take the smart objects that are in there, and it will rasterize them so that I can crop it and not have things hanging off the edges which is why it was a little bit harder to get it to snap because it wasn't a perfect square. I had creature bits on both sides. Now I can do this safely, merge them and crop them because I have all those assets as groups in my assets. So that's why it's helpful to have both. Now I can use the crop tool, crop to my square using my guides, and you see it will get rid of all this excess information. And now, this frame to this frame to that frame, this is the one I need to get rid of. That's the one that doesn't have the shadow, and I want the one with the shadow. So it goes from there to there. Good. So I get rid of this. Now, I can say make frames from layers. I can set them to 0.3. and play it from the beginning. Oh, and then there's a little glitch. Let me isolate that, figure out what's going on there. Yeah, where this frame is still showing up. So I don't need that one. So what I'm gonna do is just, instead of getting rid of that layer right now, I'm just gonna move that to the trash. Okay, the creature comes in. It's a little weird that the back legs don't move, that the tail doesn't wag, but it works, right? So this is where my animation is at this stage. It is set to reset, and that works pretty well. Now I can do what's called animating on the timeline, just to refine it a little bit without having to add any more frames or, or add any more layers, rather, or any more assets. So it ends here, and then it starts here. And that's kind of a big jump. And you know what happened? Is I turned off the fern effect here. So let me find the, the kind of glow effect of the fern turns off. And so that's a little abrupt. So what I want to find is maybe just replace this last one I know what I'll do. All right, I'm going to create one extra frame between this one and this one where I have the glowing effect and I move the fern a little bit. So to do that, of course, I'm going to close all of these because you really can't see some of these issues until you test it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back to my assets. And I am almost done. I am just refining now. And I'm going to go to turn all these off, all these different groups, where I was moving my creature. And I only want to look at the very last one. And I want to duplicate it and move it down and open it up. And this time, I'm going to turn on.